Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Qi Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing with our major series about Chinese civilization. Way back in time, at the dawn of Chinese civilization, the allied forces of Huangdi, that's the Yellow Emperor, and Yan Di defeated Chi Yu. Subsequently, a process began by which the various tribes scattered across Chinese territory merged, and this laid the foundation for the Chinese nation to develop. What followed was the Bronze Age, which coincided with China's Xia Dynasty some 4,000 years ago. Now, the development of bronze smelting had a profound social impact. Communities became more settled around copper and tin mines, the two metals that form bronze alloy. Workshops were established where the bronze was fashioned into food vessels and into weapons of war. The emergence of bronze smelting and bronze vessels marked the time in which China entered a great Bronze Age that was to last more than 1,500 years through the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties. And it was in this period of world civilization that ancient China began to make great advances. The bronze vessels discovered in China are first in the world in terms of quantity and degree of exquisite craftsmanship. Also appearing in the Bronze Age, are the oracle bone inscriptions of the Shang dynasty found in the Yin ruins. These oracle bone inscriptions mark the beginning of the time in China from which objects and era can be identified by characters. Around 4,000 years ago, there was a massive flood across the land of China, the first large-scale natural disaster to be recorded in the history of China. Many people were killed, others deprived of their homes. In the fight between people and nature, there appeared a great hero named Da Yu, who led the people to harness the rivers and control the flooding, enabling the people to live and work in peace and contentment.大禹的这个最根本的精神可是在中国不是这样的不是依靠神也不是依靠别人而是依靠自己的力量去艰苦奋斗这一点是很突出的。Modern science has proved that at the end of the glacial period there was indeed a worldwide flood on the earth and that it was caused by the warming of the global climate. This great flood has become a remote memory of all peoples everywhere in the world. But the difference between the various fables and legends of China and those of other countries lies in the fact that the name Da Yu is clearly recorded in an ancient document and that he is closely related to the beginning of a nation. Because of his success in harnessing the flood, Da Yu became universally respected and was raised to the status of head of a tribal alliance that was the Chinese nation of the time. Eventually, he established the Xia dynasty, the earliest dynasty in China's history. This 
啊，有着这个呃，这个社会上的这种公共的这样的啊，这个人与人之间啊，有统治与被统治关系的这么一啊一种结构，是吧？那么这个从历史上来看，这是文明形成的一个重要标志啊。那么，可是从考古学上来看。啊，我们还可以有一些比较具体的，从物质文化角度来看的一些标准。国家的出现是文明社会到来的标志，但是国家的出现，我们怎么样来断定、判断是不是出现了国家？那就应该是看它的都城、都邑是不是出现。它一个没任何一个国家总要有一个首都，它有一个很大规模的这种这种都城遗址的出现。The capital city not only served as the political, economic, and cultural center of a dynasty, but also as an embodiment of the development of human civilization. Many sensational archaeological discoveries have been made related to capitals, particularly when exploring the civilizations of remote antiquity. In 1959, while referring to passages in ancient documents. Well-known archaeologist Xu Xuxiang conducted an investigation in areas where people of the Xia dynasty were known to have been active. In the process, he discovered many pottery fragments at Arli Tou Village in Yanshu County, Hunan Province. His knowledge of the field led him to consider that he might have found the site of an ancient capital city. Later at Arli Tou, archaeologists unearthed the foundations of two large palace sites, the earliest ever found in China. Then,内部我们发现，这个不仅发现了夯土的基址、宫殿的基址，而且发现当时已经有中轴线的这样一种布局。中轴线大家可以想象，故宫这种这种前后几座院落、几座宫殿的院落，然后呢有同一个中轴
In the spring of 1983, just six kilometers from the Arlito site, archaeologists discovered the site of an ancient city with an area of more than 1.9 million square meters. This city, dated to the early period of the Shang Dynasty, 3,600 years ago, was built near the capital of the Xia Dynasty. It was built there in order to show the 3,000 or so smaller surrounding states that the Shang Dynasty lay at the center of the land. In ancient times, areas around the middle reaches of the Yellow River, located in the center of China, were known both as Hua Xia and the Central Plain. After the founding of the Xia Dynasty, the several thousand years of Chinese history that followed unfolded with Hua Xia and the Central Plain at the core. The Central Plain became a political, economic, cultural and ideological furnace, while the broad-minded people of the Hua Xia nation came to symbolize the strong power of cohesion and creativity of Chinese civilization. As rule over the land was consolidated and became increasingly stable, the Shang dynasty built an even larger capital city 100 kilometers east of Yanchu. Today, that city is referred to as the Shang city of Zhengzhou. Half a century ago, archaeologists tried with limited success to reveal the secrets of the Shang city. But then at the end of 1989, a farmer in Xiao Shuangqiao village Zhengzhou dug up a bronze object, clearly from the era of the Shang dynasty, that might have been fixed to a palace gate. A huge wooden stake had once stood on the base of this stone stele, and what it supported then would most likely have been the palace of the Shang dynasty. Also found in the Shang city of Zhengzhou was China's earliest porcelain, and it reveals that Shang people knew how to apply glaze to their pottery. They also knew how to use bronze and did so to create ritual vessels, weapons and tools for use in daily life and for production purposes.